Wow, what a show we have lined up for you today. This guy's been on the keto diet for 20 years, well-credentialed. Sean Wells is his name. He's gonna teach you why he's been on the diet for that long. Dr. Roby Mitchell, lo and behold, there is a pit of a fruit that is inducing apoptosis. It seems to be killing cancer cells, okay? Very, very exciting. He's gonna teach you about that. Jenny Herbacek, chemotherapy, or natural approaches? Is there a good natural approach? I'm gonna do two segments today. Toward the end of the show on fibromyalgia. How many of you have that? Wouldn't you love some relief? And finally, I'm gonna open the show with answering a question that somebody on Facebook asked me the other day, and that is, how do I kill fungus? All that and more on this, No to Call. My name is Doug Kaufman. For the past 40 years, I've dedicated my life and even my career to finding the root cause of disease. Join me and a team of physicians, pharmacists, and scientists. And soon you too will know the cause. So many times I answer questions on Facebook or YouTube when they come in. I do these three hours a week of live shows. But sometimes I don't get to them. It's not they're not important, folks, just we're getting hundreds and thousands of them coming in. Uh, two of my Facebook buddies asked this question, Angie and Maga. How do I get rid of fungus? What kills it? Folks, understand, first and foremost, most of you watching this show right now, if you want to know if you've got a fungal problem, starve it. If it's a deep mycosis and it's created a lump inside your body, and that lump is being called, uh, called anything other than a mycetoma, a fungal lump, then I might get very, very serious about both killing it and starving it. Let's talk today, in the next five minutes, about a couple of ways to get rid of it. There are prescription drugs. Let's go there first. Prescription antifungal drug stops or kill fungus. Um, depending upon the uh, concentration used, antifungal drugs like Nystatin, Spornox, Diflucan, you hear me talk about these are both fungostatic, that means it stops or inhibits the growth, and fungicidal, that means it kills it. So you can tell your doctor, I'm gonna start on Kaufman's diet, and I would like Spornox, Diflucan, Nystatin, et cetera. Uh, your doctor knows your health history, I don't. Sometimes these bloodstream antifungals can be hepatotoxic. So they can be toxic to the liver, you have to be careful, okay? He or she will know. Um, let's say he says, no, I don't want to put you on antifungals. I don't have a problem with you following the diet. Then your question, and here's the answer. Some antifungal drugs, these are natural. Psyllium fiber binds fungal mycotoxins in the gut and encourages regularity, two good things. Probiotic, good bacteria, has antifungal properties. Fatty acids like fish oils, linoleic acid, essential oils, caprylic acid, cod liver oil, etc., all provide antifungal properties. And then finally, plants have something called phenolic compounds. Phenols in plants provide antifungal properties to those plants, and then we benefit when we eat the plant. You see how this goes? <clears throat> so by changing your diet and eating more plant food, uh, by going on omega-3 fatty acids or lauric acid, MCT oils, coconut, etc., um, you could tell your doctor, look, I understand you're worried about my liver, uh, but can I try two or three things, you know, oregano oil, et cetera, and I'll rotate those every week or two um, in lieu of the prescriptive medications. So uh, he or she might say, okay, that's not going to hurt. Follow along the diet. What is the diet? Well, I'm going to go off grains. I'm going to cut my carbs way down. Uh, there are still plenty of carbs on the Kaufman diet, believe me. Uh, but it's a safe diet. People, some of you have been on this for 10 years or longer. Uh, so it's a safe diet. Okay, the next graphic says all living organisms must eat to survive. We are living organisms, but so are fungi. With food, organisms thrive, but without food, <clears throat> they ultimately die. To defeat fungus, you gotta starve it. And like I said in the opening, many of you will do great with just that. Fungi eat carbs, bread, cereals, pasta, dairy, alcohol, potatoes, beans, you know, applesauce, prunes, raisins, grapes, bananas, etc. So <clears throat> the higher the glycemic index or the more sugar a food has in it, the more fungus thrives on it. I mean, this is something that fungus love. And folks, you don't, <clears throat> you can't help it. How do I know if I have a fungal problem? How do I know if my arthritis is fungus? Are you craving chocolate, sugar, 
to eat cereal and pasta every day, rice? Are you feeding the fungus? Fungus has a way of pushing your cells to the side and saying, we need to eat first. To heck with you. We don't care if you die. We're going to feed ourselves first. And you find yourself craving alcohol and sugars and all these, you know, carbohydrate-rich foods. You're feeding the fungus. In fact, that's what's going on. Uh, finally, this, <clears throat> when suspecting fungus as the cause of your health problems, always consider both killing it and starving it. I have done probably, you know, 2,000 hours of these segments. And the one thing that holds true is this. Depending on how old you are, how strong your immune system is, and your diet, many of you will find you can just starve this stuff. In two weeks, you'll feel so much better just going on the Kaufman cleanse, you know, the Kaufman One Diet. Try it for a couple of weeks. It'll give you plenty of protein, carbohydrates, fats, etc. It's a great and safe diet. Some of you will need antifungal drugs. Some of you will need antifungal supplements, okay? You gotta find your thumbprint when you're all about killing fungus. Within a few weeks, you should feel much, much better just changing your diet. That's your sign. Diet is my deal. saw peripherally. I'm joined right now by Sean Wells. Folks, uh, out here in the United States, Sean is very well known. He's one of the uh, one of the authors, if you will, of the whole ketogenic diet. For 20 years he has followed the ketogenic diet. He's a firm believer in it and I'm here to dispel some myths. Um, I probably, Kyle and I, may have told you on TV, look this is a good short-term spurt because I don't know about ketosis. You know, is that good or bad? Sean's going to talk about that. Um, then along comes, just when I'm thinking, wow, I see these people on the keto diet, my friend Mark Sisson, you know, everybody's following this and feeling great. And I look at them and man, they look good. Then Jillian Michaels, this well-known trainer, comes on TV and she says, well, you know, it advances aging. I look at Sean, it doesn't advance aging at all. You look fantastic. You really, raise your right hand, you've really been on this for 20 years. I mean, yeah. you go to birthday parties, yeah. right? Don't you eat a yeah. piece of cake with... On occasion. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't have to be exactly. like ultra restrictive. There are things called a cyclical ketogenic diet, a targeted ketogenic diet, or just a cheat day. I'm, right. I'm real. I live this. This is my lifestyle. This isn't a crash diet for 8 to 12 weeks. What this is 20 you? years. Yeah, 20 years. Yeah. Man. Congratulations, number one. So, do you know Jillian? I, I know of her work. Okay. I, I don't know her personally. Uh, uh, Sean is a nutritional scientist, right? He's got his postgraduate degree. He's a dietitian, uh, certified sports nutritionist. I mean, he's got all the right credentials. When you heard Jillian say that, you probably did one of these. Are there two keto diets out there, or are some people wrong and some people right about it? <laughs> I think there is the the fad of the keto diet, and it's just uh, uh, ultra low carb. And now we're getting like a lot of processed foods that are keto foods, right? That that are high in uh, artificial sweeteners, and it just it overrides something called satiety. When you have all these uh, sweeteners and still what's called high bliss point foods, right? That that trigger dopamine and serotonin in your head. Food is engineered to make you overeat it, to make you like it, love it. So we're certainly falling prey to that, even with keto foods now, because keto is a big phenomenon. I like to start with whole foods and go from there. We all should agree, let's start with whole foods, right? When you say whole foods, you're talking about real tomatoes, not canned tomatoes. You're talking about, you know, real beans, not canned beans, things of that sort, not boxes or cans. And I totally subscribe to that also. Correct. Um, do you eat meat? And do you feel that there's hormone, antibiotic-laced uh, meat and non -hormone? I mean, where is your brain on that? That's a great point. So I definitely think along with this ultra-processed food, we have uh, GMOs, uh, artificial flavors, sweeteners, colors, antibiotics, these things weren't around hundreds of years ago, and now we're having to deal with them, and it's impairing our health. Yeah, I will. Uh, I have a, a local supplier here in Texas of grass finished. You know, mm -hmm. man, it tastes good. To me, that is the way to go. Here's where my fascination with the keto diet lies. 
When I learned about it, I was already into the Kaufman diet, a few years into the Kaufman diet way back in the 70s. And a mother told me she had an 11-year-old daughter whose epilepsy was controlled on a ketogenic diet. First I thought she said kiddo, a little kid, you know, kiddo diet. Then I got a library card and began to study it. There's something here, and yet it countered everything. I told you about eating an avocado at the university and those two dietitians said, you're going to be in trouble, because I didn't eat half of it. I ate the whole lot. You're going to be in trouble. You're going to have heart disease. We're dispelling some of those myths, aren't we? Saturated versus unsaturated fat. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so Ansel Keys, uh, 60s, 70s, his research really set the, the ball rolling for that on uh, fat, saturated fat, cholesterol, and all those concerns. The data doesn't actually back that up. That data was epidemiologic data. It was correlative, which if you know, know the cause, there's a difference between correlation and causation. And if we tease out things like processed food, then we don't see some of those things. And it was never, you know, my grandfather ate, you know, meat, fatty steaks, butter. They weren't sick in that generation. And then we were told to eat margarine. We were told to eat low fat. And what happened with the low fat movement? Ultra processed food. We got all these carbohydrates like cakes and cookies and crackers and all this stuff that's now making us sick. And that's the irony is that movement told us to move away from the foods that are actually healthy to the foods that are unhealthy. And of course, high margin, high profit. A guy like Sean always teaches us. It was only 60 years ago that four out of five doctors smoke camels. Let them be wrong, don't let them be dead wrong. Sean, it's an honor to meet you. So thanks for spending time with us today. Now put your thinking cap on. Jenny is here to talk about a chemotherapy that has some exciting research going on around it. And then Dr. Roby Mitchell is gonna talk about a fruit that can help people with cancer, watch. Hi, I'm Jenny Herbacek here with The Cancer Connection. In 2012, researchers at the University of Leeds in the UK ran a test to see how silver compared to the drug chemotherapy cisplatin when it comes to killing cancer cells. Interestingly enough, they found that the silver was as effective as cisplatin in attacking breast and colon cancer cells. A note of concern was that platinum, an ingredient in the chemo drug cisplatin, was toxic to both cancer and healthy cells. For this reason, some of the very best integrative cancer clinics around the world have been using silver as a component of their therapy. It's actually very easy to use. The silver is prepared in a special formulation and delivered intravenously over a couple of hours. As a bonus of this therapy, the silver is antibacterial, antiviral, and antifungal. For Know the Cause, I'm Jenny Herbacek. My good buddy, Dr. Roby Mitchell, joins me right now. Uh, Dr. Mitchell holds a PhD in cardiovascular pharmacology. Can you imagine getting that degree? Then went on to get an MD degree, medical doctor. And he's a different kind of a doc. That's why we love him so much here. Thank you for You're coming welcome. in and being with us today. Well, I get a text from Roby. You never know when Roby texts you. And it's an avocado. And I, you know, okay, good. I'll have a good lunch, you know. But he delved deeper. Let me show you the text. And uh, you went on and on. Now tell people what you taught me about this, because I didn't know. Well, I already knew that plants make all these chemicals that kill fungus, because that's what they have to do to survive all these millennia in an environment that's saturated with fungus that wants to eat them. They have to create uh, mechanisms uh, like a peel or bark or hull or, or chemicals to kill fungus. And so I knew a lot of these plants you know, that I use in my practice kill fungus. <clears throat> well, the avocado right, is at the top of the food chain, kind of you know, like the black seed oil, as far as having these chemicals that kill fungus. And so this piece that we normally throw away, that's medicine, right? Wow. And so you can take that avocado and grind it up or chop it up, right, and eat it or make a tea out of it and get these chemicals that kill fungus. Now, the interesting thing is that fungus and cancer, they, they share uh, a, a, the metabolism of being anaerobes. They don't need oxygen to breathe, and that allows them to survive a toxic environment. Well, mold and fungus, right, they survive in the deep, dark, dank places, and then cancer, right, it can survive, um, you know, 
like glyphosate or cigarette smoke or whatever, right? And that's what causes them to change into those cells. So, but when you put them in an environment of these plant antifungals, it cuts their air hose, right? So they can't breathe anymore. And then that is the uh, mechanism by which we should be addressing cancer. Yeah. How did you know this had antimicrobial activity? I mean, are you still that scientist that goes into the lab? Because I remember years ago, you bought a blood orange in here and, and some purple squash, and you tested all these things. Right, tested them in the Petri dish, and that's yeah. how we find out which foods have the most potency as far as preventing Alzheimer's and cancer and heart disease and that type of thing. The ones that kill candida, right? That's my uh, lab rat, <laughs> right? right? Is candida uh, because that's, that's what uh, grows in humans. So I test each one of these to see how potent they are at killing candida. And that's how they get on the Bally food list. Do you literally grind that up? In other words, most people hit that with a knife, wham, into uh -huh. the trash it goes. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, that's where the antimicrobial the anti-critter, you said, right. properties are, does that seed, like apricot seeds, like yes. apple seeds, does yes. it have antimicrobial yes. activity? Yes, and particularly antifungals. Really? Right? Yeah, and so we can uh, pound that up, right, and uh, uh, make a tea out of it, and then put that extract right into the petri dishes and see how well it kills candida. Okay, so Roby, everything you've done the last, since I've known you, quarter of a century, uh, has been geared toward killing bugs, critters. Yes. You know, I yes. love that word, critters. Yes. You yeah. introduced me to that. What foods do you find to be the most critter killing? One very good barometer is color, right? So the darker, the better. So if you find things that are black, purple, dark red, dark green, right? That's a barometer for how potent they are going to be at killing critters. The exception is tea and coffee, right? Okay. So you want your tea to be the white tea, actually, okay. right? That is okay. the most unrefined. And you want the light roast coffee because of that roasting process, it gets the bitter out. And the bitter is your medicine, Yeah, <laughs> right? exactly. Well, then what about carrots? Something like, you know, falcarinol, the antifungal component in carrot. It's orange. You one time did a segment. We want purple carrots, right? Want purple carrots, originally. Yeah. So the uh, orange ones, those are man-made, right? The, that Those are hybrids uh, that man-made. Same thing with our corn, right? If you find original corn, right, it's purple and, you know, dark color, red, dark colors. You've done a lot of shows with me, and I thank you for yeah. coming in and wanting to continue educating people. We've talked about cancer, we've talked about diabetes, we've talked about thyroid issues, and the one reason I've always listened to you and been drawn to you is because you talk not about this, ow, not about this, oh, I feel suicidal, talk about this. Right. Is that from whence all disease comes? Exactly. When those critters get out of the cage and then your immune system responds to that with inflammation, that is the what we find a common denominator, whether it's Alzheimer's or heart disease or cancer or psoriasis or uh, asthma or acne, it's inflammation. It's that war between the, your immune system and the critters. So we got to keep those critter levels down and foods do that. You guys can't have him. We have him here <laughs> in Texas and we're going to keep him. Thank you so much, Dr. Mitchell, for coming in. Really a joy. The year was probably 1988, 89. I was working with a group of doctors out here in Dallas. And uh, folks, we had become pretty well known for being a little advanced. We would try antifungal regimens for psoriasis and all sorts of skin problems. They were skin doctors. And one day a referral came in and this woman, uh, 30s maybe, um, had a completely different problem. No skin problems, but she had something called fibromyalgia. Well, we all looked at each other. What in the world is fibromyalgia? We would soon learn many, many, especially women, uh, suffer from fibromyalgia, and there's a concomitant. There's another problem that goes along with it, and that is CFS, chronic fatigue syndrome. You hurt so much, you just want to go back to bed. It's become a huge problem. It's like autism. Where was that when I was a kid? It wasn't. Where was fibromyalgia when I was a kid? It wasn't. There's all these new diseases, folks, if you don't think the chemicals in our food and some of the things were the medications we're taking, and I think we're a bit out of control in America, okay? Let's talk about this one. Let's first define what is fibromyalgia. First, this question. Suzanne asks on Facebook, I have fibromyalgia. Can anything be done to relieve this pain? Boy, did we hit a home run with this woman. As it turns out, um, she worked at the medical school in Fort Worth, Texas, and twice 
I was invited when she got better. I was invited to go talk to the doctors out there, and they were really interested. I mean, they had notepads taking notes. I didn't know anything except a couple of medications that just kill fungus helped her with her fibromyalgia and a diet that at that time we didn't have a name for. I don't know, it's Doug's diet, follow it. Today it's the Kaufman diet. Fibromyalgia, fibro is fiber, my is muscle, and algae is pain. So fibromyalgia is muscle fiber pain. What causes fibromyalgia? I think I can tell you now, whereas I couldn't have 30 years ago, a lot of fibromyalgia has to do with fungus. But that's not what websites say 30 years later. Um, although this one is close, I kind of like uh, what they said, the Mayo Clinic. According to the Mayo Clinic, doctors don't know what causes it, yada, 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 yada. But they say it most likely involves a variety of factors working together. Genetics, I don't know. Infection, 100% agree. But when a doctor sees that word, he thinks antibiotics and bacteria. And then physical or emotional trauma. And that really, to be candid with you, all of these... I never saw a male with fibromyalgia. When she got better, uh, she started referring other people with fibromyalgia to us. And folks, you can sometimes hit a home run by looking at this thing reasonably. You can sometimes, if you ask the right questions, I sat down with her. Did you grow up in a moldy home? No. My grandpa, well, you know, grandma kept the washer and dryer in the basement. This was in Missouri. And uh, I slept down there. Okay, that's a wall underground mold and basements go hand in hand. Ever had antibiotics? Oh my gosh, you know, I was on antibiotics every week. Number two, wham, home run. Ever drink alcohol? You know, Doug, a traumatic event happened to me when I was young. I don't want to talk about it, but I turned to alcohol for two years until I got help. All three. Here was someone that's probably infested with mold. People with fibromyalgia or chronic fatigue, please hear what I'm saying. Get a Petri dish, lay it out if you have, you know, HVAC system in your house. See if mold grows on it, especially in your bedroom. We spend a third of our lives in our bedroom. If you're chronically being exposed to mold through antibiotics, alcohol, corn, wheat, sugar, then no mold might be causing even fibromyalgia. Hope that happens. Hey friends, thank you so much for enjoying the show. 20% as much as we enjoy assembling it, putting it all together and bringing you all these great guests. Thank you, Dr. Roby Mitchell, avocado pit. I remember mom taking them out of an avocado, filling a jar with water and growing an avocado tree. And here the pit has medicinal properties according to Dr. Mitchell. Uh, thank you so much, Sean Wells, 20 years on a keto diet, he looks great. I mean, it's absolutely amazing, this diet. And thank you for those of you who are ordering our Keto Med product. We really appreciate that. Uh, Jenny Herbacek, silver. Folks, who'd have thought, do you suppose, zoom forward with me 15 years in the future, now 85 years in the future, will oncologists be using silver IV as an antimicrobial agent for cancer patients? I don't know. Fibromyalgia, didn't that help? The neurotoxicity of antibiotics and so forth, the mycotoxicity of these things, absolutely amazing. We just must think every step we take in a medical environment. And finally, how do I kill fungus? Folks, you starve it and you go about killing it, and it may take a few years, but it's well worth the effort. God bless you. I'll see you next time. Tell a friend about Know the Cause.